the last topic in this unit is about uh, the phenomenon called El Nino and La Nina. Uh, it's also called ENSO, stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation. Um, so those are terms that refer to this um, phenomenon. And so El Nino is a, um, a phenomenon that takes place in the Pacific Ocean is where it originates. Okay? And we can think about sort of normal conditions in the Pacific. And that's on this left-hand diagram. So what the typical conditions are, as we've learned, the trade winds blow um, from east to west along the equator. We see the trade winds here in the Pacific. Here's the equator. And those trade winds, as they consistently blow from, um, as they consistently blow from east to west, uh, they move water okay, from east to west as well. Surface waters um, pile up, sort of, in the western Pacific. New water rises from deeper in the ocean to take that, the place of that water. And so we have this um, process in which we have upwelling here along the coast of South America, along Peru, Argentina, Colombia, Ecuador. And that upwelling of water comes and then this procedure uh, continues. That's normal conditions. However, every um, three to seven years, okay, episodically what we would call it, is um, a condition in which the trade winds weaken. Okay? So these trade winds slow down and they may even reverse. And that brings us into an El Nino oscillation, and that's shown here on the right. We see that the trade winds have reversed. The movement of these warm waters has reversed as well. And so we have changes that take place um, because of this. We have um, a reduction in upwelling of water here in South America because now the process is reversed. Okay, we have um, warmer winters are typical in the central part of North America. And there are other global changes in climate that happen after, during an El Nino uh, oscillation. So here's another um, model of it. So again, we have Peru, okay, we have Australia. We have normal conditions. So in normal conditions, if we're looking at the side view, we have the trade winds blowing from east to west, okay, forming this convection current as we see here. Okay. Um, typically we have dry conditions because we have this descending air in South America. We have wet conditions here as this air rises around Australia. In the oceans, we have the same sort of pattern. The trade winds bring with it this, these waters okay, that have been heated by the sun. Okay? As these waters get blown off towards Australia, there's upwelling. This upwelling brings with it nutrients from deeper in the ocean. It leads to an enriched food web um, for consumers and eventually um, carnivores. It's why there's generally really good fishing along the coast of South America is because of this upwelling of water. When a, an El Nino event takes place, again, these trade winds weaken, and so this process shifts. These trade winds can even completely reverse in a strong El Nino year. And so what we have is we have um, less of this water being blown towards Australia. We have less upwelling. We have the trade winds um, that have weakened, and therefore these, um, this convection current has been disrupted. Okay? And the area of higher precipitation changes and eventually can make its way all the way over here to um, South America. So that's an El Nino Southern Oscillation. And we can see this. Um, scientists track uh, ocean temperatures uh, over time. These are anomalies, so zero is sort of about average. We can see over this time period when we have um, these um, low levels, these um, troughs in the graph. Those are times when there's an El Nino uh, oscillation. When we have these peaks here, that's a La Nina oscillation. And then the others are just normal years. So we could see that it's not really predictable. It happens uh, episodically, but we can't 
for sure um, predict when an El Nino or La Nina event is going to take place. And here are um, how the El Nino events affect sort of global climate. Okay. Um, so we have um, effects throughout much of the Earth. You know, for us, an El Nino um, episode leads to warmer uh, conditions here, okay, in the winter or in the northwest, okay, and it varies from place to place. It's drier in Australia because of that shift, wetter along the coast of South, South America. Um, so these um, wind currents in the Pacific have global effects. A La Nina event is really just sort of, um, if you think about normal conditions, a La Nina event is sort of an uh, exaggeration of those. So when we have our normal conditions here, we have the trade winds and we have it, um, precipitation around Australia, upwelling in South America. When there's an El Ni or La Nina um, event, Okay, the cooler waters on the west coast of South America, those waters become even cooler. The trade winds increase even more. We have even more upwelling within the ocean along the coast of South America. Uh, it's drier. It's um, wetter in Australia. We have generally just an acceleration of what's typically normal. And that, again, has impacts on climate um, in lots of different places. If we think about North America, we have um, warmer conditions here in the Midwest and, and Mid-Atlantic. Uh, we have wet conditions in the Pacific Northwest. There's um, cooler conditions here. So it has global effects on, um, on climate. Okay, and here is a sort of a, a situation when we see a La Nina, same thing. This is normal conditions. In a La Nina, we have stronger trade winds pushing these, these, uh, this convection cell even further to the, um, to the west. We have um, even stronger upwelling. We would likely have better fishing uh, because of this upwelling of nutrients here along the coast of South America. And here's, again, a, a map showing what happens in the winter um, when we have La Nina effects. And we can see it's, it's different than um, what happens in an El Nino event. So if we just sort of summarize, normal conditions in the Pacific, we have trade winds blowing from east to west. We have upwelling of ocean waters, allowing for oxygen-rich water, uh, nutrient-rich water uh, coming to the surface, providing for good fishing in the coast of South America generally in um, the U.S. and South America. It's dry during these times, and it's wet in Australia and Indonesia. La Nina conditions are, are just um, exaggerations of these things, even stronger trade winds. Dry areas are even drier. The wet areas are even wetter and are, are, are extremely stormy. So it's an acceleration of normal conditions. An El Nino event, Okay, in ENSO event, we have the trade winds shifting, slowing down, or even reversing. Um, the surface waters in South America are warmer. They have less oxygen. There's less nutrients. Fishing is bad in those areas during El Nino events. Um, we generally have rainy conditions in South America, in the U.S. Um, in South America, especially, this can be extreme. There can be so much rain. And these ecosystems uh, generally have, are adapted to dry conditions because that's what's typical. Oftentimes we could see uh, mudslides and landslides taking place because of this um, El Nino um, prompted high levels of precipitation. Um, and then the upwelling shifts from upwelling in the coast of South America to off of the Australian coast. And so we can have, you know, better fishing uh, an enriched food web in Australia during El Nino oscillations.